Fractal design cases have inspired modders all over the world who have built some amazing systems like this dark side themed case by George Priscellus showcasing the spacious internals in the Define S, or Metallic Acid, a mini ITX system by Justin Olson featuring a white, black, and red color scheme and a super clean layout in the Define Nano S. There are a ton more awesome builds like these on Fractal Design's modding series page, so check it out via the sponsor link in this video's description and get inspired for your next project. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for August 2017. If you're not familiar with this series, basically at the beginning of every month, I put together a couple PC build parts lists. These are for you guys at home who might not be as familiar with parting out a computer that you might build yourself. And then uh, I usually build one of the systems during the month as well. So if you are here for an actual build, I recommend checking out my builds playlist and I'll link this down in the video's description where I have lots of stuff, including just recently my very inexpensive 525 to 550 dollar Ryzen 3 build which I've already built and already tested so uh, check that out if you desire and also help me vote for next month of course fan feedback is very important for this series so check out the straw poll for September and remember you can choose more than one option here I have a series of prices so tell me what price point you're looking for and then also different form factors I kept this one a little bit more generic because I'm not exactly sure what the landscape is gonna look like next month when we actually start uh, going and choosing parts, but um, who knows? We're in the middle of summer though right now. It's like August 1st, literally. And uh, here is the poll from last month. And it was actually very evenly split amongst the different options that I put out there. Uh, at the top was a full 1080p gaming and streaming setup with PC peripherals, camera, and capture card. But very close behind it was a mini ITX Ryzen PC. Very close behind that was a back to school system that's portable, able to multitask, and can play games. So I actually combined all of these. These three top answers are all what my first system is. Uh, and then I also have Threadripper, of course, because Threadripper is now announced. It's launching on the 10th, so just like a week and a half, people can already pre-order them right now, so uh, links to that is also in the description. Now to me, all of this is rumor and hearsay, of course, despite my obviously photoshopped thumbnail, I have no direct access to any of this stuff, but nevertheless, I decided, since we now know that Threadripper is launching, we have the 1920X and 1950X coming out in just about a week and a half, uh, let's part out a system that is reasonable Threadripper. Now there's also a 1900X that was just announced, it's only going to be 550 bucks it's going to be an 8 core but that's not available to the very end of the month so for those who want to jump in right when Threadripper is available what is the most reasonably priced Threadripper build that I could put together was kind of how I was going about that one so let's start off actually with neither of those builds and just take a quick look at the video card landscape and I'm just using PC part picker for this like I do most of my builds this is an exhaustive for like all the P all the cards that are available but uh, taking a look at cards in the mid range that are very difficult to get due to coin mining Ethereum in particular, the 1066 gig can be had for $284.99. That's about $35 over retail. And let's see if this is actually, if we can actually even buy it for this price. Uh, this is actually a new egg marketplace seller, it appears, but uh, it it's it's actually there. It's in stock. So $35 over MSRP, you know, could be better, I guess, <laughs> but could could definitely also be a lot worse. Let's take a look at the 1070, which is also very popular. The pricing is relatively better I guess still more than MSRP the MSRP for a 1070 is supposed to be uh, 380 or 390 dollars but it is in stock at least so you you can at least purchase it uh, if you want a Radeon though you're still pretty screwed it looks like right now our RX 580s are starting at 400 bucks and that's for 4 gig options and our RX 570s don't even appear to exist the cheapest 570 is more expensive than a 580 so uh, yeah, Radeons are still very challenging, so bear that in mind. The mid-range of the graphics card market is getting a little bit better, but it's still not in a good spot. Um, but let's get on to actually building a system, and we'll start off with our Threadripper system. Now, Threadripper is very brand new. Again, uh, pre-orders just went up, so compatibility filters on PC Part Picker aren't quite up to date yet. But you can see we only have two options at 1000 bucks and 800 bucks for the 1950 or 1920. Again, there's going to be a 1900X. It'll be 550 bucks, but not available for pre-sale yet. So let's consider the 12-core option here. So if we were building a 12-core, uh, uh, which would be a workstation system, then we all also would want a CPU cooler and a motherboard. So if I choose CPU cooler, because um, 
PC Part Picker has automatic compatibility filters, we can see the CPU coolers that they have determined are currently compatible. Now the Ryzen CPUs are going to ship with a bracket in the box that's compatible with a wide variety of Ace Tech coolers. So any of the Ace Tech OEM coolers that includes uh, variants like uh, NZXT's Kraken series and Arctic Liquid Freezer as well as Corsair will be compatible, which is pretty nice. Um, in fact, over on AMD's site, I'll put a link to this in the description as well, they're having an, a more updated list of uh, what coolers are going to be compatible. So based on this, I chose the Master Liquid 240 for this build, um, even though it's not currently listed as compatible on the PC Part Picker site. And then our motherboard options are also pretty limited right now. We have uh, five, basically, models that are up for pre-sale right now from ASRock MSI Gigabyte, another ASRock, and an ASUS. And the cheapest is the ASRock X399 Tai Chi. So I just went with that one since it's a good 50 bucks cheaper even at $333 uh, compared to the other options from MSI Gigabyte and stuff. Now I haven't directly tested uh, these motherboards or anything like that, so I'm just going with something that I have a reasonable idea should should get the job done in the ASRock Tai Chi board uh, that they have uh, come out with in the, for the past couple generations has been a pretty good board. Anyway, here's my full build and you can see the actual full, total price is coming in at a little over $2,000, uh, which is nice when you consider that Intel's uh, 18 core when they launch it will cost $2,000 by itself. Also when you consider that Intel doesn't even have a mainstream or non Xeon based 12 core that you can even buy uh, right now. So this is like your only option really. But um, let's run down the rest of the parts. We have the Threadripper 1920X 12 core processor right there at the top of course. I chose the Cooler Master Master Liquid 240, 240 millimeter all in one. It stays pretty quiet. Uh, it was only about five or ten bucks more than the Arctic version and I know this is a, a good cooler so I went with that one. ASRock X399 Tai Chi of course. Hopefully there'll be some more images of that available soon. And then for memory, uh, the, the SSD for the video card, I went with parametric filters because I'm not concerned as much at the ex specific exact product you should go for here. I just want to make sure that things are compatible enough. Uh, so here's our Threadripper, already available for pre-order on uh, Amazon. There's our Master Liquid 240. Uh, I like the tubing for this one actually, it looks pretty nice and the fans it comes with are very quiet. Uh, there's our list of compatible coolers again, because I'm doing these out of order. There's our Azerac motherboard, so if you did want a closer look at it, big old TR4 socket right there up on top, and then of course uh, lots of dim slots. Uh, supplemental CPU power because they do seem like they uh, gonna potentially draw a lot of juice especially if you go for overclocking since they're all unlocked for overclocking I just wanted a 16 gig kit which in my opinion is kind of the bare minimum you should go for if you actually want to support quad channel memory on the Threadripper platform this is a 3200 speed 16 gig kit that was chosen from a parametric filter so uh, it is G skill memory of course and uh, we have a fairly reasonable uh, idea that this should be compatible as far as running at a higher speed but I want higher speed memory so that's why I ruled out anything below 3200 speed so if that's all you're looking for a 16 gig kit and DDR4 3200 you can just uh, sort that by price and it's just currently choosing the most inexpensive kit which is also the most inexpensive kit by another 20 or 30 bucks so we're getting some great deals here apparently uh, did roughly the same thing for the SSD chosen SSD uh, and I wanted oh the 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 space on the SSD I want a good price per gigabyte number and um, I actually have found when you sort by price per gigabyte and you're including not just 240 250 gig SSDs but also also 500 gig range SSDs you can get below 30 cents per gigabyte but you have to buy a more capacity rich SSD so you need a 500 gig in order to go for that in fact the best price per gigabyte uh, for a not 500 gig range SSD is all the way down here with the SanDisk. So it's only 84 bucks, but you're paying 35 cents per gig. So just bear in mind guys, uh, there's some really good deals on 500 gig SSDs right now for in the 100 to $150 price range. So keep an eye on those as well, even though my ultimate choice for this build was the cheaper version. Uh, for a video card, again, I just went with uh, a parametric filter and finding something that uh, would be relatively inexpensive. GTX 1070 is kind of that balance of like not terribly overpriced when, it, when you're comparing it to the MSRP, but you still get a lot of bang for your buck uh, and matches up a little bit better with something like a Threadripper. I would not want to put something like a 1050 or 1050 Ti or something in there with a Threadripper. That would make no sense. For a case though, I just got the Cooler Master, Masterbox 5. This is a really solid mid-range case. It's only about $50 to $60. Uh, 
really good layout internally. Again, comes with nice fans, so things are going to uh, stay nice and cool for you. And of course, we'll have space for that 250 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Finally, a power supply. The EVGA BQ series uh, it's doing a, a good job with the variants I've tried of it so far. Uh, very inexpensive. Comes with nice cabling, so it's going to look relatively nice. All black cables, and uh, you can get a 750 watt version here for just about 70 bucks. In fact, uh, even as low as 60 bucks if you go for that mail and rebate. So that is my Threadripper entry level build. About entry level, I know. Uh, about two thousand dollars though. But again, consider that the 18 core Intel that they have only paper launched so far is going to be two thousand bucks by itself. That's a pretty serious, like, high-end workstation system you can get going that will easily be able to handle gaming as well for about two grand. So I'm um, really excited that this platform is launching soon. Let's get into build number two, though. Again, this is uh, going off of your guys' recommended recommend recommendations from last month. We got a mini ITX Ryzen 5 gaming PC. This is meant to be able to do gaming and streaming. It's also supposed to be small and portable. And this current list that we're starting out with here is just the desktop parts. But since I did want to include everything, I do have some supplemental stuff to add on there as well. And actually, the price for this has gone down by 50 bucks since I parted this out this morning, so that's always nice, too. It's coming in at about $1,111.18, uh, with the mail-in rebate, of course. We've got a Ryzen 5 1600 6-core processor. So if you're going to be gaming and streaming at the same time, Ryzen is a great option for that, and you want to go with a 6-core or better, so this is a really good bang for your buck price to performance and unlocked for overclocking as well. Gigabyte motherboard, a B350, and this is one of just a few little tiny motherboards that are available right now. Um, although this one is a little bit nicer, I think. Uh, Biostar has one of these as, uh, available as well, but this one also has Wi-Fi. And imagine if you're taking this to a dorm or something like that, you might uh, t get some advantage by being able to uh, not have to worry about running an Ethernet cable everywhere. Other than that, it's got a nice layout, a couple dim slots, PCIe 16 by, uh, by 16 at the bottom, some, uh, some SATA, and I believe it also has an M.2 uh, on the back which I should be able to find. No, it doesn't. Never mind. Oh, yeah, it does. What am I talking about? And then, then it's got an M.2 slot on the back there, too, so you could drop in a high-speed NVMe SSD if you desired. Um, again, I went with parametric filters for most of the other stuff here. So for this one, I just wanted a 2 by 8 gig kit, so I want 16 gigs total, so you have a little bit of extra headroom for doing stuff beyond just gaming. Uh, and then again, I wanted DDR3, 3, DDR4 3200 because faster memory is going to make your Ryzen system faster overall. And again, sort by price. Uh, so we're, we've got a Team T-Force Nighthawk kit down here at the bottom, uh, which, you know, may or may not look the, the prettiest to you, but um, hey, it lights up there, so that's a bonus too. All black though, not bad, and it's got the size and the speed that we want, so uh, check out the other options down in that same price range though if you want something that might match up a little bit better. Now for storage, I was pretty much in the same situation as I was with our Threadripper build, which is that I'm looking for a really good price per gigabyte. I chose that same 240 gig SSD, but again, you have uh, some pretty good options up in the 500 gig range, so check those if you're willing to spend a little bit more. I also added a two terabyte hard drive for this since this is supposed to be an all-inclusive build that includes accessories and all that good stuff. So you're gonna spend 50 to 60 bucks for an additional couple terabytes of uh, magnetic storage for long-term mass storage. And then of course I went with the GTX 1070 again because that's kind of what you want to go with if you are buying slightly higher end and don't want to uh, pay too much. And then for our case, we have a Cooler Master Elite 130. So uh, let's take a quick look at that. Very inexpensive case, it's only about, uh, again, 30 to 40 bucks, USB 3 on the front. Uh, plenty of ventilation, since it is a smaller form factor, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have air going in there, since these are some higher end components. Uh, it's got a little stick out part, part on the back, so it can support larger size power supplies. And this is a little bit bigger than the uh, 110 version of this, so I just wanted there to be a little bit more space in there for uh, airflow and whatnot. So there's your case, although there are, of course, other mini ITX case options that are out there. And then for a power supply, I went with the BQ600, watts, uh, which should be more than enough for supplying power to the core components as well as the graphics card. Now, I did say that this was supposed to be a complete uh, layout, so not just the core components for the case like I usually do, but also peripherals as well as stuff for streaming. So when it comes to peripherals, you're going to want, of course, monitor, keyboard, mouse, and then something to listen to, and then probably a microphone. So I went with monitor, keyboard, mouse, and then a headset, which includes headset for sound, as well as a microphone for talking, since I'm thinking you're probably maybe going to be streaming with this system, since that was what we're building it for. Uh, so for a monitor starting off, we have uh, the $169.99 
Acer G247HYU. Now I didn't want this to get into like, hey, help me choose the best monitor. I just picked this one out because it's a really nice combination of specs and price. For less than 200 bucks, you get not just a 1080 display, but 2560 by 1440. It's 24 inch, which is a pretty decent size. It's IPS, so it's gonna give you better color depth. It's got a good range of connections, including DisplayPort and HDMI. And it's a, it's probably like 50 bucks cheaper than most of the other 2560 by 1440 monitors in this range. Do bear in mind that it doesn't have a base amount on the back, so you're stuck with a fairly mediocre stand. Uh, and it doesn't have speakers, um, but thankfully we also have a headset that's included. But only 170 bucks for that. For $40, you can add a Devastator 3 uh, gaming combo uh, from Cooler Master, which includes a perfectly adequate membrane keyboard, as well as a mouse with uh, all of the basic mouse functions you would need, including, including a forward back button. This is, again, just a, like really getting the job done quite well for only about $40, so uh, that's a good combo there. We also have, of course, a webcam. If you're gonna be streaming, you probably wanna stream your face in there as well. So the basic solution is your Logitech HD uh, C920. Old standby, it's only about 60 bucks. This gets really good 1080 image quality uh, and you can set it up and get going and, and you, you won't have a problem there. Oh wait, I, I didn't even go through everything yet. Uh, the, the headset I was recommending is the HyperX Cloud Stinger, uh, which is only about 50 bucks. Really good bang for the buck again for this one for $50. The quality you get in everything. You can get the HyperX Cloud that's another 30 bucks more expensive and it's got better uh, uh, sound quality as well as a better uh, microphone. But if we're trying to stay relatively inexpensive, uh, check that one out. So if you take the base price of the system, which is uh, around $1,100 to $1,150, the accessories I just listed there is about $315. So that would get you right in the, say, $1,500 range. Now, if you wanted to take things up a step, uh, and if you're interested in a question that people ask me about all, all the time, which is that when I'm streaming, the image quality looks really good. Well, that's because I have higher end equipment. So for instance, this camera that you can kind of see right here is a GH4. You don't necessarily need to spend that much, but if you want the really good image quality and being able to switch to stuff like this and also being able to not just stream on the system that you've built but taking something like a console and porting it in there uh, with uh, an external capture device then add on this extra kit for another $780 a capture card and a camera. Uh, for a camera, the Lumix GH7 is a sort of uh, slightly baby brother to the G4 that I, uh, uh, the GH4 and the GH5 that I use. But really good image quality for this one. It's $600 camera, but it's got clean HDMI out. Uh, it comes with a lens in this kit that is uh, perfectly adequate for what you'd want to get done with it. And then combine that with something like an Elgato Game Capture HD60S, which is external, just has a simple HDMI in, does 1080-60. Uh, capture of video externally, whether you're capturing from a camera or capturing from a console, and that would be the entire solution for uh, gaming, streaming, video capture, and just about everything you'd want to do. And the system you're building is very small and portable, so if you wanted to take it with you to college, I think that would be a good choice as well. The total for all that stuff together, including the G7 and the capture card is about $2,200 to $2,250. So guys, that wraps it up for my monthly builds video for August 2017. I hope you have enjoyed and perhaps gained some insight as you go about choosing parts for your own builds at home. Of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to open the description where you'll find links to most of the products that I talked about, as well as a link to the straw poll where you can vote on next month's monthly builds video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.